Thank you very much for talking to us uh, at Geek Out Southwest. I'm here with uh, the basically the, the stars of the show. <laughs> the, uh, the it's also here. all of the show. Yeah. <laughs> all this, of the show. This is all of us. This yeah, is all of the show. that's it. That might actually solve already one of my questions. <laughs> so I'm here with Steve Mould, Helen Barney, and Matt Parker. And our first question is kind of what brought you guys together? How did you guys kind of conjure up? This it's kind of a nerd support group, really. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> this, is where we, this is where we look between each other to say, who's going to answer turn is the question? Yeah. Uh, do we I think want our the... stories agree, so okay. it doesn't matter who do we, do we want the proper version or the Steve Mold version? What's the Steve Mold version? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you turn it. I'll see what you say, and I'll, I'll see if my, my version is any different. All right. Uh, well, I think, I think the version of our origin story is that we were all doing shows at the end of the Fringe separately. That's correct. Mm, Matt that's was doing correct. a show about the maths of death. Yes. Steve was doing a show with Gemma Arrowsmith, brilliant comedian. Mm -hmm. a double act nerdy sketch show I was doing a solo show because I had no friends Actually, I was doing the double act as well with yeah, Commander Hyde I, yeah. I was doing <laughs> I was out on my own uh, Steve and I weren't prepared to go it alone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was brave I was out there I was self producing and uh, I, I was doing a like nerdy love song uh, show and people would tell us to go and see each other's shows yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Because they were like, oh, you'll love Matt Parker's show. Oh my gosh, you'll love Steve Moore's show. Uh, and I assume they said the same about me, or you haven't told me otherwise. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> but then when we realised that, we were like, hang on, if they think we'd like it, then they, the people who were seeing the other shows, would like my show. Yeah. And so I ran around flyering people as they left yeah. Helen and Steve's yeah. show, going, yeah. all right, here's some flyers. Here's some you, yeah. you, if you enjoyed yeah. that, yeah. you got to. That's called, that's called exit firing yes. in the world of uh, right, exit. the other <laughs> And, uh, and also, I was uh, my perspective on it was like, if these people are doing this, they're the same kind of stuff as me, I either need to kill them or work yeah. with them. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, we went, we, because we're peace-loving nerds, we, we went for the latter. Uh, and yeah, we came up with an idea, because we yeah. knew each other vaguely. Robin Ince had introduced us. Yeah, we'd his, done stuff uh, together previously. Yeah, Robin Ince is the centre of most things. Mm. Um, introduced me to my husband, actually, in, uh, yeah. by booking us both for a gig. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty much how he does his matchmaking nowadays. Um, and so we decided by the end of that fringe, we were like, hey, let's do a new material night when we get back to London. Let's try out this nerdy stuff and don't care if people don't turn up. And, you know, let's just try things out. Oh, my gosh, it'd be great. Mm. Let's call it Festival of the Spoken Nerd. I still have the text message with that on it. Um, and, uh, and, and, and then uh, we got back to London, did nothing about it. <laughs> Right. Being a cat. Oh, you guys did nothing about it, oh, and yes. then I yeah, oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. yeah. I just start the way you, you tend to go on. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just emailed me. It was like, oh hey guys, you know I run a comedy club. Um, I've just booked it for a night and called it Festival of Spoken Nerd. Uh, are you are you free? Yeah, if not, I mean that if they hadn't been free, be this very could have just, different. This could have just been me, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, so True. they were free, and uh, more people bought tickets for that night than have bought tickets for my the comedy club I used to run, like. Ever. So we thought, yeah, we're on to a big, a winner. big winner here. <laughs> and 10 years later, we're here. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same story. I mean, the only thing I would say as well is like, because uh, we were doing these what, occasional mm. spots for Robert Inns, something mm. or something like that. But it's like, you know, it's oh. not like a normal stand up gig where you can just, where you kind of have to do mainstream gags. In fact, you want to do nerdy stuff, but there's no opportunity to try out those things before doing something important in front of you know hundreds of people. Yeah, oh, we were getting uh, asked to do these like Hammersmith Apollo shows, these big like you go, oh, okay. Bloomsbury <laughs> Theatre Christmas shows, yeah. like 500 people sold out crowd. We're like, look, so, so yeah, so spoken nerd was uh, a, a, like a, it was a device for us to try new material in front of a small audience who are friendly and up for it. Uh, and so yeah, like every month there's a new theme, and we forced ourselves to do new material about this new theme. Uh, and then, like at the end of the year, we'd sort of do a bigger one, which is the best bits of over, over the previous sort of year. Or I like Steve's, Steve's version is more accurate, but it does underplay my role as producer. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. More narrative, less admin. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's true, it's good storytelling, but you know. Excellent. Well, thank you. How would you describe the festival of the spoken nerd in 10 words? And you get one word each. Oh. Are we doing one word story? Uh, it's sort of one word story. Are. You've used up four of them already. Ah! <laughs> yeah, you've used two more. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. Um, uh, Matt, you start. Well, <laughs> we do shows that mix science, comedy, Maths. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> you said and! I said and! No, I said and! 
no, no, no. Because Where's the music? We, we needed, we needed, if you'd said and, then I could have gone. I wasn't counting, oh, no, so because right. I, oh, I wanted fine. I wanted to get music in there, so that's I was fine. just gonna have no ands, and you were gonna oh, say music. Oh, you just do a list, and then it ends well, you on. You should have said music then. If you wanted music <laughs> yeah, that much, because then Matt would have oh, said ands. Oh man, yeah. no, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I did science. You yeah, know, okay, that's fine. Right. Well, you know, I think you did very well. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you all should have just said our own thing, and <laughs> we wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> I mean, we're not ostentatious, right? We can't just wow. like throw these things wow, off the top of our heads. Not as easy as it looks, eh? Yeah, certainly not. Um, so how many shows have you guys done like not as the tour but as festivals for coming out ever oh my oh, good question. gosh we probably uh, average do you know what I counted this up for the book we must have done a show a week on average yeah really well, like we do a lot when we're on tour mm-hmm. the last tour was like 40 shows I counted up and if you include like Hammersmith Apollo shows and all of our tours it was like at least 50,000 and that was a low that's humans, humans. not shows yeah yeah, 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 yeah but yeah, you know humans. if every show is like 250 people oh, on yeah. average okay. then that's Shorter like shows. Uh, yeah I'll tell you yeah. 200 yeah. shows yeah, on the order of, no how many is that sorry I can't count now it's on the order of uh, two orders of magnitude yeah yeah, yeah. a couple of hundred couple of hundred lost count yeah, as you and they, they of course have not a thousand they've ra- they've ranged from the you know 87 people in Stockton yeah. <laughs> Stockton Arc to a uh, great great venue name very mathematical audience Good. can't can't say they there's no Cheltenham Parabola followed. no it's no Cheltenham Parabola is it it's no Reading Hexagon mate no. Ooh. No. we were so gutted when we were booked into the Corby Cube and it fell through we were oh, <laughs> so disappointed uh, and then that's ranging to like you know Latitude Festival and these, these right. big shows and doing like shows in Las Vegas and stuff like that. So yeah. Our answer is nerds. between ten and a thousand. Yeah, <laughs> between ten and a thousand. It covers most of the angles. Um, behind the scenes, uh, how many people work with you, or is it uh, obviously you have support? You've mentioned oh, wives a very good and question. spouses. And so husbands. during, um, I want to say not enough. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Do we mention how there's a lot of the admin. I think we should, yeah. I think we should yeah. float that. So uh, when we're on tour, it's one person uh, extra who you know uh, does all the tech, drives the van. And, and that sort of stuff, and then uh, oh, plus our social media managers, plus, oh, yeah, plus oh, people, yeah, remote our, people, uh, yeah, tour manager around. and our tour manager's assistant, agent, and then the like the person does the music, the person does the animations, uh, our director Ben, director, um, but it kind of expands and contracts. Mm. We kind of they come in when we when we're like help, we don't have enough time to we do these things. Friends have spoken though. But yeah, we've well, always got a tech person mm, yeah, that changes, yeah. you know, even when we're doing tr- the sort of, um, you know, new material type shows, we've always got a tech person. Or something. And there's probably a, probably a, a family of four or five tech mm. people we use consistently. Yeah. So, yeah, Matt Buckley is our tech on tour this time. Mm-hmm. Charles Wakeley and Matt Watson have done it previously. Yeah, Hannah, Hannah Fisher, Fisher does um, stuff in London for us. Yeah. It's, an, it's, a, it's nice. We, when you, we basically do shows for theatre technicians, right? Mm. The entire yeah. selling to, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. to members of the public is a very complex form of crowdfunding mm. so that theatre technicians can enjoy our shows. They come down for the show and they're like, normally I just sleep through them, but that was really good. So <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> we yeah. Basically, yeah. we're doing our shows for you and if the audience enjoy it as well, then that's Great. a bonus. But basically, we know who our main support in this venue is and these audiences, they come and go, but you in the box, you're there <laughs> the whole time. You've been here. I'm not sure, this is, I'm not sure we should be saying this on a, on a <laughs> podcast. I'm not saying so. we don't care for our audience. They uh, certainly enable and facilitate us. Uh, but, <laughs> and we do the shows for them, obviously, but you know, we, we, we very much value the technical yeah. people that we work with as we tour around. Uh, Sarah Cooper, who does our, helps with our merch as well. Mm. Oh, yeah, admin as well. Yeah. Various. Ladies, anyway. admin all the way down. Oh, yeah, Charlotte yeah. and Joe, they do oh, our uh, marketing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, designer. God, Flip. we've got a whole team. Flip I've got I got more programmers than I can probably... Yeah. Like, <laughs> a minimum of four they're programmers. Not, they're, they're purely for you, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's true. They're, just, they're yeah. just for me. I mean, like, millions, really. Yeah. Yeah. In an ideal world, like... Uh, Wait, Matt have... will have his entourage of programmers in the back of the bus. Doing <laughs> yeah, yeah, program. just doing coding. Code, yeah. I'll have someone who's permanently doing merchandising and making us coffee and, you know... Fluffing the set, or I don't know what. Uh, Steve, who would you have if you had a cab? Someone to clean the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> to clean the microwave. I've filmed, a, I've filmed an egg exploding inside and it hasn't really been the, the same as... You know, one of the things we've listed, someone who cleans microwaves is an actual job. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clean-up. Yeah, yeah. Other, yeah. Others less so. Anyway. <laughs> Excellent. How did you get into science? 
Oh. Matt never did. Never. Uh, never. But, uh, yeah, one day. <laughs> <laughs> you live in hope. We keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying. Um, oh, well, I don't know. For me, uh, I was really into music and science. Those were the two things that I really was into. And yeah, I think there's a certain amount of like your parents, if, you, if you've got the parents who kind of let you try anything, you find loads of things that you like and some of them really kind of chime at you. And science and music were those things, even though my parents are not even remotely sciencey. Uh, and I started reading Richard Feynman books, uh, um, uh, and that was kind of something you, physical that you can kind of have yourself. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is the process of discovery. I'm, I'm working out how to view the world in a, in a different way. And that was really exciting. Um, to the extent that our book, the book that Steve and I have written, uh, out now, uh, out on October the 5th, please, please pre-order your copies now. Um, <laughs> we have finally, did you get my email? We finally... Beaten Feynman. Beaten Feynman in the subcategory on Amazon of uh, popular science slash... Uh, Lasers quizzes. and optics. Lasers and optics <laughs> wow. slash applied optics. It's a subcategory of a subcategory, guys. We are now the number one in that spot, uh, whereas for the last six months it's been Richard Feynman's QED. So I feel like finally we have beaten the uh, Amazon algorithms... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To falsely eject yeah, Richard right, Feynman yeah. from first place for a temporary period. That's right. uh, but yeah, that's very pleasing. <laughs> Come we did it. <laughs> Take yeah. that, Feynman. Yeah. Does it feel right to no, say that? No, it doesn't feel right at all. No. <laughs> could, could we do a joint first spot? Yeah. No. It's an achievement. Yeah. On the left. On the so you know, that's where I, that's that's where I go. And now it's great because I get to do music and science. And it's mm. like, well, hey, my careers advisors never told me about that. Yeah. They were like, hey, you like science? Why don't you be a vet? Yeah, really? I mean, that's what they always said. That's what they told wow. anyone who was into science. I was like, science vet. Science. You are not listening. They didn't say that to me. Yeah. I didn't get told that. What did they tell um, you? About? I don't know. I'm, oh, I vaguely remember careers counselling, but I can't remember what they said. You know what I mean? They're clearly. But anyway, I, I mean, it's just a standard route for me was oh, I really like science, mainly because of good teachers and wanting to know how things work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then doing it at uni. <laughs> it's quite, I mean, it's pretty you know, <laughs> wow. boring story, but. Yeah. Matt, when will you? Oh, come my parents, to uh, my dad's an accountant, so they're a lot less flexible. Oh. Just like, hey, kid, do some maths and. Um, my dad's an accountant too. Yeah, really? No, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, my dad's oh, an accountant. Gosh, how long have we known each other? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was to say, we should, we should actually chat about our... Uh... <laughs> no, but where did it go so wrong for you, Matt? Uh, well, you know, uh, I, I enjoyed adding up. Yeah. Actually, he's, he's, he's an accountant, not a mathematician. And I know from most people, there's no difference. Right? Oh. But he just loves adding up lots of numbers yeah. and then making sure they all match at the end, mm. which I also enjoy doing, don't get me wrong. Uh, but then for me, it's all the patterns behind the numbers and everything else. And so I grew up doing math before I went to school. And then, you know, once you've got a rolling start on mathematics, if you already enjoy it, then school math becomes so much easier. And so, yeah. yeah. And I never stopped to question it. And here I am today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we're pressed for time, so I'm pressing on. Um, so if you had to have a sort of a, a, geek off, a geeky competition or a nerd competition, who would win? Who is the that depends monster. depends heavily <laughs> on the rules of engagement. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I think this actually touches on one of the themes of the show, which is that there are many different ways to yeah. nerd out in the extreme. Uh, and it's a question we ask our audiences in the interval, and we get all sorts of answers from from people who've done like uh, the um, crochet ridiculous patterns, crochet, yeah. ridiculous crochet patterns of uh, famous DNA or something. Uh, yeah, or famous female scientists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hyperbolic crochet. That's good. Oh, um, yeah. So uh, I don't know if this was wow. if this was like a pop quiz about baroque music, I would be like, so I'd work I think floor with you guys. You would, you would. But I think, that I seems think very narrow. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> you could narrow in enough that anyone is the top nerd yeah. in that category, right? Yeah. If you zoom in far enough. Yeah. If Seems. it's if it's if it's science slash lasers and optics slash <laughs> practical optics, yeah. then it's me yeah. and um, slash UK only. That's exactly. It. Well, I mean, you can string the algorithm yeah. any way yeah. you like. I think yeah. what we're trying to say with this answer is that none of us it's are prepared. Me. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Steve just sat back down uh, again. Uh, oh. Well, okay. uh, <laughs> Yeah. I think I think I think to name the nerdiest of us is just asking no, for, really for someone else to out nerd them in a different yeah. aspect. Yeah, no. I think we benefit from each other's nerdy. Um, yeah, 
You certainly seem to bounce off. Yeah, each other quite yeah. We, we nerd in slightly different directions, yes. which is which is great because we cover more ground. And I think that's a, a trait that's shared in common with a lot of comedians as well. I think people underestimate how how nerdy comedians are. Even mm. even the most kind of mainstream comedians are ludicrously nerdy about how jokes work. Yeah. If you speak to Gary Delaney about how mm. jokes work, or you follow him on Twitter, or you see Jimmy Carr doing mm. a, a new material night, and I've seen him there with the clipboard literally like ticking off things uh, as it goes, restructuring as it goes, restructuring as it yeah. goes and stuff like that. And Not that he's magicians, but still fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. It's fine, it goes programmers, yeah. magicians. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 comedians, uh, then us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, I think that's a tr- kind of trait that we share, and that, that, that kind of works with the comedy as well because the, the kind of comedy we do I think that incorporates science in a meaningful way is that thing of taking an idea and pushing it beyond where it really where most people stop with that idea <laughs> and that's what I find the comedians that I like the most do mm. like Stuart Lee will take Richard an Harry. idea and Richard Herring they will slam it into the ground until it's dead, dead. <laughs> and, then, and then they will continue to find punchlines in the carcass of what's there on the floor and I think in a way that's the kind of a, the adventure of science as well. It's like people ask the basic questions and then they're like, oh, why is the sky blue? Oh, rally scattering. Great. Fantastic. And then they stop. But the, the, the discoveries are there to be made if you go, hang on a minute, but that doesn't apply in this situation. Why? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa let's look a bit further. So factoring in that answer, uh, the answer is Helen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally... <laughs> Steve yeah. and I were like, that's interesting. Yeah. I was like, well, hang on, let's tear yeah. this apart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dear. That made me responsible for everything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Producing the show, yeah. being the yeah. nerdiest <laughs> one. Oh. Steve shows up, starts on my yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hey, guys, numbers, aren't they cool? <laughs> <laughs> I got you coffee before this interview. <laughs> I do it's every true. night. Um, <laughs> so, apart from obviously doing the show, uh, what would you say are your your hobbies, your geeky hobbies, what would you be doing if you weren't doing the show? Mm. Apart from preparing for more shows. Is uh, that literally right now what we'd be doing if we weren't? Um, yeah. Right now, I'd probably be making YouTube videos because that's the thing I'm really enjoying. That's a hobby. Besides, hobby, yeah. uh, present. Well, I mean, it's not really a hobby. So the problem is our hobbies very quickly become part of our... Yes. Job. It's very hard to section off a hobby. Yeah. That's a great... That's a, Good point. Actually, if you think, oh, here's a cool thing I'll explore, and then suddenly it's a YouTube. Of course, video. that's going to be a really fun thing mm-hmm. to show someone later yeah. on, either on stage or in the form of a video, or possibly even writing a book. Because I, <laughs> um, <laughs> a couple of years ago, we started learning, like you could juggle before, yeah. and hell, I could juggle. And I yeah. could. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn to juggle, and it will have nothing to do with the show ever. Mm-hmm. Right? And to be fair, I'm not juggling in the show. Yeah. I was like, hey, and now we put juggling in the show. Yeah. Right? And <laughs> this guy's can now juggle three balls. Bless him. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh. At once. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, I, I program as a hobby, but that becomes part of the show. Yeah. yeah. I watch a lot of TV. That can't. That doesn't that's... really become part of the show. Mm. No, no, that's safe. I mean, that'd be a great show. Yeah. <laughs> stick, stick on Netflix. Matt catches hey, up guys, on, on Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> yeah. uh, what so. would I be right now uh, at home? I would be uh, playing in uh, uh, in a bath with 350 ball pit balls and my uh, one year old daughter. Uh, which is what I was doing before we arrived here in the show today. I would probably still be in there, literally sitting yeah. in the bathroom. You with describe her. your offspring as a hobby. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's. Yeah. Uh, it's a good distraction. It's, yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah, yeah. She's, she's some form. She's, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I can't exactly uh, just yeah. put her in a cupboard at the end of Anything's the Anything's a hobby if you try hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, I think I have one more question. Um, I was going to ask you about your favourite TV shows. And I thought, oh, you guys won't have enough time to watch. Yeah. We've got a lot of time in the backs of vans, <laughs> late at night when you get home from a show and you can't sleep yeah. uh, because of the adrenaline thing. So, uh, although saying that, I haven't watched any telly for about a year and a half, so don't know about you guys. I'm currently enjoying... online and, you know, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm currently enjoying uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, by which yeah, I mean, I like, I we watch things. one episode yeah. a month, which is <laughs> about <laughs> as much time as we get. <laughs> uh, like, uh, oh, should we watch the episode? It's like, oh, we've only got 10 minutes. But um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's really good. It's a really, really good show. I'm ticking through Rick and Morty as and when they come out, which is very exciting. Yeah. Um, I feel the long, dark gap between season two and three. I really want weird. to watch Rick and Morty, but I kind of don't like watching TV shows on my own. And uh, my wife isn't that 
into it. Like she enjoys it, but she wants a bit more character development than Rick and Morty gives you. So uh, I think season three though they've they've Ooh. doubled down on. Um, um, do you know why they've got a fifty percent female writers? That's amazing, well. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So my wife Lucy yeah. isn't that into it either, and I went, "Hey, they got loads of female writers this season," and she's like, "All right then." <laughs> uh, and they've been re- It's a really yeah. good season. They did that. Um, they, they, really they did that with John Oliver as well. Yeah, they bring. Oh. Yeah, they well they did. Uh, they took people's uh, gender and name out of uh, the applications to the the, oh, the um. Sample stuff. They've done it on. Uh, I just, I just noticed on Wikipedia, Wikipedia when I was flicking through the episode list, I was like, man, there's loads of new writers, yeah. and it's a pretty good job. They, they sort of actively got oh, people to send stuff in, but uh, but the stuff that was sent in, they basically anonymized it and went from there. And it, and it and of the people who they were like, oh, we like your stuff, come in and write. We were like, oh, you're a lady. Oh, great. You know, rather than when mm. it's not anonymized, mm. kind of you're like, oh, I recognize that name. That, that dude writes nice stuff. You know, it's like, yeah, so it's, it's you that's know, great. really interesting, yeah. proactive stuff. And that's one of the, I mean, that is one of the American <laughs> shows that I watch and probably the only one that I watch regularly anyway. It's a good way to um, recruit writers as well. Yeah. 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 Like, baseless, yeah. so to speak. Absolutely. If you had to give advice on how to get into science to the people of today, or geek entertainment to the people of today, oh, wow. what advice would you give? Don't, there's no room anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, 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 that's not, that's absolutely not true. Like, I always think the more, more the merrier. The more the merrier. As long as you're not that good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not yeah. No, 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 because the more people are doing uh, um, science and comedy, nerdy comedy, uh, the, the, the better the whole kind of field gets, if you see what I mean. If, mm. if there's only one person doing a certain type of comedy, there's, there's no, like, survival of the fittest, there's it's no evolution, there's no one to, like, share best practices. You can't get a breeding population of yeah. audience together. Exactly. Do breeding I have population one? of audience. Oh, yeah. back. <laughs> there's only one breeding pair left. <laughs> um, so our, our, our background, all of us, is that we did comedy. Um, mm. I suppose mainstream. Yeah. Uh, I, for the benefit of the listener, I did uh, uh, air quotes. Um, <laughs> Separately so around both main I, and street. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> and we, did, we did that for years, it, it, which kind of, I think, gave us a yeah. big yeah. It, like uh, so, so, I mean, a, a big tip is just do some, like, new material nights, uh, like uh, stand-up comedy new material. And, sorry. Uh, yeah, like, a, open you know, mic. open mic. Yeah. Open mic, that's what I mean. Do some open mic nights. It'll be awful and you'll hate it for the first few, probably. Um, like, I was very lucky that um, my first open mic night was uh, organised by Josie Long when we were really? at uni together. Yeah. Um, so I she was like you. three or four years below me or something yeah. like that. And she organised it. And she, obviously, she's got this amazing way to make an audience really lovely. Um, so, so I had an interesting start. But anyway, um, try and it'll just, it will give you stage confidence. And then when you get to do some science comedy somewhere or other, maybe for Robin or something like that, You'll just be, you'll be, you'll be ready. I mean, yeah. do it, do it. Is the just do, do it. Get experience. Yeah. Do it. Don't do wait. comedy. Don't wait. You don't have to do comedy. Like if you're at a university, either studying or working, there'll be an outreach department you can go and talk to. Oh my gosh. If yeah. you're an industry, you can become a STEM ambassador. And there's just so many ways to get some kind of experience or practice uh, doing science or mass yeah. communication. And yeah. do, there's nothing beats doing it. That's all. Exactly. We did. We did years, like literally years, of God. doing comedy. No, that wasn't like, science Sometimes comedy. enjoyable. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes Occasionally. Difficult. Just uh, driving around the country. Yeah. Uh, and I used to be a tour guide as well, so I spent 10 years doing yeah. it. Flipping oh, around the thingy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Around, thing, around the thingy, Albert Hall thingy. Um, That's just the level of tour guide yeah, you expertise. You were a teacher at one point. You, I was a, a teacher, teacher, yeah. You were Become a science a teacher, explainer. Guys. I was an explainer. At the yeah, museum. so <laughs> actually put, put that together, like two different strands, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, but this is the thing, I think, like a lot of people start now and they start straight into science comedy. Like that's a thing, and I'm not saying that isn't a thing because I think it is a thing. You're welcome. But it's, it's <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, but it, it, interestingly, I th- I think any perf- any performance like oh, this is again me like nerding out. Um, any art form is a cumulative sum of your full experience, and if all you've ever done is one particular niche. I feel like that you might be missing out on opportunities of seeing things in a different way, finding new creative ways to do stuff that you might have experienced in a different context. And I, f- I find that that's what I find with, with um, our shows, is they draw on 
your full experience of everything that you've done. Mm-hmm. And if all you've ever done is is one particular niche, then you might be missing out on a way of doing something that really makes it makes it different and unique and uh, unrepeatable by anyone else. So it's too hard, basically, so don't bother trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I dream of a world where someone's like, oh, hey, you're going to the science comedy show tonight. And they're like, well, which one? Is yeah. it Festival of the Spoken mm-hmm. Nerd? Is it... Several competitors we're not naming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the science yeah. comedy shows are available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's kind of really enjoyable. And I uh, also uh, dream, dream of a world when someone doesn't mistake me for Helen Keane and be, I really loved your radio show. I'm like, oh, thank you very much. And they're like, yeah, we particularly enjoyed P- Peter Serafinowitz. I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't my radio show. You're yeah. welcome to Science Comedy Communication unless your first name's Helen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically not working. <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, that's that's the, uh, the the many multiple layered answers to that. Yeah, just get on, do it, do it, mate, yeah. do it. I think that's very good advice. Um, very, do very good advice. Do it. do it, do it, do it, do it, do uh, it. How are we doing for time? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of doing it, doing uh, it, we need to go and do a, a show. show yeah. to go and uh, check yeah. out. Okay. I won't ask my final question. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, 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 well that's sure super quick. What is it? What is it? What is it? Um, is this the ne- the, right. Yes, the okay. next big science discovery that you're excited about, or what you want to be the next big science discovery or discovery that you're excited about. Like, you know, some people would like hoverboards that was back in the oh, 80s. Yeah. Oh. I mean, we're still, yeah. for, I mean, the trouble is, we just had gravitational waves. Yeah. Just yeah. Now you, the, someone found a couple of prime numbers quite recently. Oh, oh really? uh, yeah, yeah. so Get dull. Your... So dull. Because yeah. <laughs> we know there's bigger ones. Yeah. Why hey, stop looking. Um, I have the only printed out copy of the current biggest prime number. <laughs> so I kind of don't want us to find another one yeah. just yet because yeah. it's really expensive to print. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to, va- we were vaguely talking about selling them. We, we looked at it, yeah. So yeah. expensive. Um, it comes in three volumes. <laughs> that's so bad. I mean, don't, you know, like a dark matter particle would be really nice oh, that's to true. see. Yeah, um, from CERN. Yeah, 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 something from CERN. Uh, Technology wise, like some mad thing that they've done with CRISPR would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know. As opposed to all the prosaic things they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, actually... it's all really mad and cool. <laughs> yeah. This is, the, yeah, just watch more CRISPR. CRISPR. <laughs> more, more, more CRISPR stuff. There's, there's, there's something very, like, that's very, seems very close, but I think it's quite far away. It's like the, the, um, the Douglas Adams bagel fish, mm. the thing that. Oh, yeah. could, and then all the little elements of the technology are there, the kind of the, yeah, the um, audio analysis that can take someone's speech and extract it from a, a noisy room, yeah. and then the, the kind of AI stuff that can then convert that into another language, yeah. and then all of the, the speech play out intelligent stuff that can turn it into to, to language. But it, it's, not, it's, it's not quite what's there. Weird, well, what's interesting is like people can't translate. Yeah. Languages. Even like people who know both languages really, really insanely well. They're like, well, there's no way to say this thing in this language. So AI, like AI could never do it. <laughs> you yeah. Like a human will spend half an hour thinking, how the hell can I translate this sentence? So uh, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Driverless yeah, cars. Like, oh yeah, driverless cars. Oh, there's a little I can't wait. I don't, I'm sick of driving. I never want to drive a car again. It's yeah. boring. Yeah, that's why we pay Buckley. <laughs> <laughs> Scalable quantum computers. That's my answer. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Nice. Cool. nice. Multiple, multiple Raspberry Pis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> awesome. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. That was our interview with the Festival of the Spoken Nerd. We hope that you can get to see one of their shows. In the meantime, we would like to thank Helen, Matt, and Steve for taking the time to talk to us, and to you, our audience, for joining us. I've been Chris from Geek Out Southwest, signing off until next time. I tell you what, you can really edit this down, can't you? <laughs>